Hello everyone, welcome to another Commander Deck Tech. Today we are going to be exploring a new commander from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan set, one that brings an exciting synergy to a strategy we haven't seen supported yet. We're talking about Tetsun Gnome Champion. Tetsun is a double-faced creature. It costs a blue, a red, and a white. On the front, it's a legendary artifact creature gnome that's a 2-2, and whenever Tetsun or another double-faced artifact enters the battlefield under your control, mill three cards. You may put an artifact card from among them into your hand. Then you can craft with six artifacts and pay four mana. Crafting means that you exile this artifact and exile six artifacts from among other permanents you control and or cards in your graveyard. Then you return this card transformed under your control. The backside is the Golden Gear Colossus. Also a legendary artifact creature known, but this one is a 6-6 six -six with Vigilance and Trample. And it says whenever this creature enters the battlefield or attacks, transform up to one other target double-faced artifact you control. Create two 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens. The thing that Tetsun wants us to do more than anything else is play double-sided artifacts, a synergy we haven't seen before. So I've collected up the best 26 double-sided cards that fit well together in this deck. That includes a bunch from the three Ixalan sets, but a few from Transformers, a couple from Innistrad, and even some Phyrexians. Let's see how this deck works and see if this new synergy brings new life to a new strategy. So one of the major themes in this deck is tokens. This comes for two reasons. The first is that artifact tokens are really useful when we're activating Tetson's crafting ability to get that card flipped over. And the second is because incubator tokens are double-sided artifacts which trigger Tetson's front side. That's some great synergy there and we're going to exploit it. You'll see a bunch of incubator cards in other sections, but the ones that are just here because they make incubator tokens or care about incubator tokens are Krum Host Seed Shark, Corruption of Tawashi, Elish Norn, the double-sided one, Essence of Orthodoxy, Eyes of Jetaxius, Phyrexian Awakening, Progenitor Exarch, Sunder the Gateway, and Tiller of Flesh. All of these make incubator tokens in some way, with a few of them being recurrable and some of them helping us transform them as well. Next, we've got a few cards that make artifact non-creature tokens, which help us with utilities such as card draw or mana ramp, but they also help with crafting our commander because they're artifacts. Those cards are Sarah Jane Smith and Smothering Tithe. Smothering Tithe is, of course, one of the best white pieces in the game, and Sarah Jane Smith is going to be triggering very often with how many artifacts we're going to be casting. A bunch of cards make artifact creature tokens too. Anim Pakal Thousandth Moon is a new one from Ixalan, which makes gnome artifact creature tokens anytime we attack with a non-gnome creature. Efficient Construction, Psy Master Thopterist, and Third Plast Iconoclast will all trigger whenever we cast artifact spells, which again is going to be often. Golden Guardian and Master's Guide Mural both make golem tokens and are double-sided, and Thousand Moon Smithy makes us some really powerful tokens on both sides as well. We also put a Thopter Spy Network in here, which is slower, which only gives us one token per turn, but it is going to be rewarding us with draw whenever we hit an opponent. Mimic Vat is our last one here because it's an artifact itself, but it also has the ability to copy dying creatures for our own benefit. This is a great card in any token deck, and considering we already have highlighted 20 other cards that make tokens, with some more to go on the rest of the list, I feel like it's a very strong addition. Let's talk briefly about some creatures that I've included here that specifically care about artifact creatures or make our artifact creatures stronger, since the majority of our creatures are going to be artifacts and we're going to be making a lot of tokens as well. So a solid strategy with any go wide deck is going to be pumping up all of your creatures to have maximum effect. Arcbound Shikari, Filigree Vector, Steel Overseer are here to put a bunch of plus one plus one counters on our creatures. Pumping up our tokens is a great way to swing through to our opponents in case the other factors in our deck aren't enough to get us to win. Jetfire Ingenious Scientist is a double-sided artifact and it synergizes from having a bunch of plus one plus one counters not just on it but any of our creatures. It's not useless if we don't have the counters since it can put them on itself but it's a great ramp piece if we can get the other synergies working as well. And last we have Rise and Shine. I've included this one because we have a lot of artifact creatures but we also have a lot of non-artifact creatures. I want to have a contingency in case we don't have a bunch of creatures on the board and this can help us secure a surprise win. 
Next, let's talk about the double-sided artifacts that give us card advantage. Brass's Tunnel Grinder is a great semi-wheel effect, and if we manage to flip it over, the Discover effect from Takutlan is another great card advantage engine. I think we'll see this a lot in a lot of red decks coming up. Conqueror's Galleon is really easy to flip in this deck, and the backside gives us a land that can draw cards or recur stuff. Mysterious Tome draws us a card on one side and taps down permanence on the other. I was on the fence with this card, but remember, any double-faced artifact triggers Tetsin. So the more we have, the better, and it at least replaces itself with the side that draws a card if you're worried about it taking up space. Prowl Stoic Strategist has very specific criteria for drawing cards, but it does it basically for free, so I can't complain about having this in the deck. And finally, Treasure Map lets us get a couple of scries off of the top before it flips. It's honestly not the most synergistic flipping artifact from Ixalan for this deck, since we only have a couple of ways to make treasures, but it's cheap and it helps us in the early game, or it can feed Tetsin in the late game. Notably, I'm not including Primal Amulet, mostly because of the number of instants and sorcerers in this deck, which are minimal, and most of them don't benefit from being copied because they're interaction pieces. Speaking of which, let's talk about that interaction. We have a couple of standouts in this category that work particularly well in this deck, but let's start with the essentials. Our Counterspell Suite includes Counterspell, Arcane Denial, and Dovin's Veto. Nothing surprising there, just good Counterspells in Jeskai. Our removal spells are Chaos Warp, Dispatch, and Swords to Plowshares. All good in these colors, and Dispatch synergizes well with the artifact theme in particular. I'll also put Lodestone Needle in this category because its first ETB taps down something for two turn rotations, which is quite good, but really this card probably is better suited in ramp or card draw because the backside lets us explore. We have four board wipes in the deck. Blasphemous Act, which is simply unmatched as far as red board wipes go. Organic Extinction, which works well with our artifact creature strategy. Sunfall, which is a little bit worse if we already have a board because it exiles all of the creatures, but it does make a sweet incubator token afterwards. And Unstable Glyph Bridge, which is surprisingly strong, and I think we'll see this one a lot as well. It can save our commander if it's the only thing out and it hasn't been flipped yet, and it can help us slow down our opponents if we get it flipped to the other side. In our ramp section, we have even more double-faced artifacts. The non-double-faced ones we have are Arcane Signet, Azorius Signet, Boros Signet, Gilded Lotus, Is It Signet, Mindstone, Soul Ring, and Thought Vessel, which I feel like is a good selection on its own for a Jeskai deck. Clay-Fired Bricks searches for a Plains card, which is welcome, and the other side pumps our creatures, which is also welcome. I don't think we're going to have 7 mana to pay for this very often, so we probably aren't going to take advantage of that ETB trigger on the backside, but we'll take an Anthem effect, because otherwise it's just an artifact that's sitting on the battlefield. Eye of Ogre Tack is a very strong mana rock to begin with, flipping over into a card that helps us cast artifact spells for free. I say artifact spells because that's probably what we're going to be exiling here with its craft effect, but you can go whatever direction the deck needs. Mystic Skull is a mana fixer, a cheap and a fair one, but on the back it's a Prismatic Omen, which is even better at fixing our mana later on, and we probably aren't going to have to pay 5 to flip it over. Sunbird Standard is a standard 3 mana rock on the front, but if we can get the right cards exiled with its craft ability, it's a Bloom Tender on the back, which is incredibly useful ramp. Thematic Compass is a great early game piece if we're struggling to find lands. Then its backside is a better version of Maze of Ith, which can serve as some protection against decks with big swingers that we're having trouble against. And last we have the Enigma Jewel, which is cheap to put down and taps for two for our artifacts, which is great at any stage, and honestly we're probably going to be using that side more often than the back. The backside has a really steep cost and probably only mixed utility in the deck, but it is cool in certain situations and maybe something we want to invest in if the cards play out right. Alright, let's talk about the rest of the double face cards that we have that didn't fit into any other category. First. Azor's Gateway, which is the main reason why I built this deck, because it's probably one of the strongest double-faced artifacts in the game. It has a very steep cost to get it to flip normally, but the other side is a land that taps for mana equal to your life total, which is bonkers and a nice piece to have in any deck. Tetsin flips it very easily. Once you have this out, you can functionally get all of the mana you need. 
Dowsing Dagger is another great rand piece, flipping into a land that taps for 3 mana. The activation is easy normally, but it's even easier in this Tetsun deck. Dowsing Device is a pretty cool haste enabler. It goes from giving something haste anytime an artifact comes down, which is handy with all of the artifact creatures, but it quickly flips on its own into a land that gives something a huge bonus for relatively cheap, and it's still a haste enabler. Love this card. Definitely going to be a staple in a lot of artifact decks. Matsatlantli, the Great Door, is another card with a crazy backside like Azor's Gateway. You could activate its ability to get there, but you could also just use Tetsun to flip it, and the backside is going to give us mana equal to the number of permanent cards in our graveyard. Tetsun already does self-mill, so this is another great help in the deck with its high permanent count. Optimus Prime Hero bolsters every end step, which is a lot of plus one plus one counters. It's great support creature, but for me it's on the cut line because it's more expensive to get out, and it doesn't help us get closer to our goals in other areas. Paleontologist Pickaxe is another crazy new artifact from this set. Essentially, the craft ability lets us choose some creatures that we want to exile, and then whatever we attach this to, the creature is going to be a copy of one of those creatures that we exiled. There are some really cool token making effects in this deck that would be awesome if we could move it around or keep that piece if it goes to the graveyard, or there are some non-artifacts that we might be forced to mill that would be especially strong with this, such as Elish Norn, and that's going to be a very nice piece to have. The Everflowing Well synergizes with the self mill plan and is very easily flipped into something that has a similar effect to the dinosaur headdress we just saw. Last but not least, we have Ratchet Field Medic. It's a really good card in a life gain deck, which this deck is not, uh, but it has it on itself and so it can fuel its own ability. It can recur things from the graveyard for us and that's going to be helpful with all of the self mill. Onto the land portion of this deck, we have stuffed every artifact land that we can into this deck. This is important because Tetsun needs a lot of artifacts to flip, and exiling lands from the graveyard doesn't hurt as much as some other permanents. Power Depot and Treasure Vault have extra utility. Power Depot can give something a plus one plus one counter if it goes to the graveyard, and we can make a ton of treasures with Treasure Vault, which is very useful for crafting. The rest of the artifact lands are your standard set, with Ancient Den, Darksteel Citadel, Great Furnace, Razortide Bridge, Rustvale Bridge, Seat of the Synod, and Silver Bluff Bridge. The rest of our lands, we have a standard Jeskai package, with Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Hallowed Fountain, Mystic Monastery, Rogren Triome, Sacred Foundry, Sea of Clouds, Spectator Seating, Steam Vents, Training Center, Six Islands, Five Mountains, Six Plains. Overall, I think this deck is really fun. The only tinkering I would want to explore is more consistency with tutoring as well as a better outlet for Azor's Gateway and Mats and Lantley, because they're going to be generating a lot of mana and we could use that for something. Overall though, this deck gets out really fast and swinging, and I think it's got a lot of potential going for it. In my first couple of playthroughs with it, I found the balance of flipping artifacts and amassing a big board incredibly fun. So I hope you have fun with this commander. I look forward to making more deck techs and releasing them to you, and I'll see you in the next one.